Welcome back to the Charles Ogan Experience. Good evening. Welcome Gentleman. back, man. <laughs> well, mate, it's so funny to see you. Like in shorts, you never wear shorts. That's a thing, right? Like a ah. racehorse. Good to see you, brother. Brother. What's Thanks. up, brother? And then Episode 61. Wow. Guys, shout out Spotify, YouTube. But <laughs> who's counting? <Right. laughs> it's 61. Rate, um, rate Spotify, YouTube, do all right. that. If you're listening on Spotify, top right-hand corner, you got to press the three dots, then rate, rate five stars. YouTube, subscribe, like, do all that. Do it. Like a racehorse. Like a fucking racehorse. What's up, bro? You, you ever heard that expression? That's basically where I'd pat a racehorse as well. Probably a bit higher up the thigh, though. Uh, Maybe the on the neck thigh. as well. They like that. A good a good pat on the neck, and then they go like this. Nay. Hey. Hold on, that's... Never okay, mind. yeah, yeah. All right. What's, what's up, brother? What's up, chief? Uh, okay. <laughs> well, what's been going right. on? You've been, you've, been to, you've had a go on. I went to Germany, yay! And next weekend I will be going to Germany, and the following weekend I will also be going to Germany. Now, wow, three weekends in a row. Yes, and I couldn't tell you why. Maybe it's just lucky, eh? Good planning. Oktoberfest is almost over, and we're Cheap seeing tickets. the wind. Up. Actually, no, there's still Christmas markets. I don't know the difference, honestly. But I went to a Christmas market Shout and it handbag. was like carnival without the whining and the rum. Just loads of people. cold people walking <laughs> like in directions they don't want to go yeah. oh, and okay. trying to stop and look at shops. But then you'd just be blocking off like a thousand people behind you. <laughs> so you just can't buy anything. Not only that, but there's no jerk chicken. It's just like, though, the food was pretty good. I had a, I had a, a sour spicy, cream. Uh, I did have that later at a restaurant, but now I had a Kartoffel puffer. Yeah, I, I had to pay for German. it. Yeah. Uh, it was <laughs> potato <laughs> and apple sauce. <laughs> Trust me, it was delicious. Amazing. It was very Victorian how he just poured the slop into frying oil and then gave it to me on a plate. I don't care. What are you teaching in your seminars at the moment? Uh, <laughs> so that <laughs> seminar... <laughs> Do you want to hear this? <laughs> I actually do want to hear. What are you, what are oh. you teaching in your seminars? At the oh, moment? in the seminar. Well, I am teaching. So we did half butterfly. People wanted to see the, the half butterfly. And then I did some heisting. Some heisting, you see. Okay. When people are being negative from the half butterfly. And, you know, you feel like you're getting inside position a lot, but they're just backing away. Then you start to heist, stand up, try and get their hands to the floor. Try and, you know, ankle pick them, for example. Like the video we did previously that's the, a nice one j just the tip tippany did quite well yeah it did actually yeah fair play people love it but again you need uh you know, i need maybe a change of pace someone who's particularly negative to make this sort of stuff work this is the stuff you showed me how you just like building height on people yeah get cold tie building height head position mm. foot and hip and generally now if i'm playing half butterfly i'll just build height and then try something and build height and try something over and over again god i'll unless they're literally like diving at you I won't really stay on my back for the most part. I'll try and build height with good head position so I don't get body locked and then yeah. I'll work from there and just continue building height until you get the pushback reaction that you want. Fair play. Going over those scenarios then. Did you do anything? Mate, I've been, I've been sick for a week. I haven't been well. So funny. I'm feel it is quite funny. <laughs> so funny. I'm feeling a lot better now. Lots of energy now. We sound it. I can't wait to train. I just want to get consistent with my jiu-jitsu. How's again. your knee? Fine. All right. What happened to it? Don't know. Just checking. Knee's all good. All right. Uh, uh, should we do a questions? All right. You start seeing as I put my question box too late in my story. How to complete a how to compete at black belt without steroids? How? Uh, you just enter you just the, lose. You just lose. Yeah. You just go there and lose. Path fucking pathetic. Yeah. Uh, mate, you just enter the competition and you make sure your training is good all year round and you are in the what you're in the right weight class. So if you're if you're really heavy, you want to make sure you're really fucking strong. If you're light, you want to make sure you're really fucking strong for that weight class get, get and get athletic better. too. Get better at subs. I feel like if someone's juicy it's super hard to win positionally. Get better at subbing and breaking parts of their body. Be and more maybe dangerous. Maybe they'll tap and maybe they won't because they'll heal really fast. Yeah. They will heal really fast, but you can win the match by being very dangerous. Yeah. I mean, if you break them and they don't tap though, then that's it really. There's no winning. Yeah. You, you can try to break something else. You can only, yeah, you can try to break something else, I guess. But if they're just not tapping, 
<laughs> I just, yep. Yeah. Yep, take it. <laughs> yeah, I just that, won't tap that, to that. that. That actually happened to you. Yeah, yeah. But I didn't continue breaking. No, you should have. Yeah, that would be good. Just continue breaking into, well, all right, mate. I mean, <laughs> at this stage, you're going to win, but... Your leg is completely broken. <laughs> Doesn't look good, does it? Someone's someone's hurt. Yeah. I, I would just try and get into the best shape as possible. I think that's a really good answer, though. Get really dangerous with submissions. Be in very good physical shape. Make sure mm. you're training. You have a sensible training program that you're following all year long. And then the boring stuff, sleep, hydration, all that bullshit. Yeah, if you're not juicing, but you're fighting against juices, you've got to make sure the rest is on point. So you're at least, you know, trying to match their intensity, et cetera, et cetera, yeah. et cetera. Right. Okay, mate. Right. Shall we do a question from YouTube? That'd be a good idea. They never get a look in, do they? They should, because they're going to build up traction on YouTube. All right, what's your walk, out, walk around weight? Will you move up to 99 kg at some point? Somehow I doubt that, Chief. I'm walking around like 87 basically most days. You would need to get on the... If you got on the source, you'd be a nice 99 kg. Thanks, man. It's coming. If you ever catch me at 99, I got juicy. You got juicy, yeah. Uh, what would you do differently with people disengaging with, with leg locks as quickly as possible at all costs? Would you try to sweep off your leg attacks instead of finishing them? Yes. I think if someone kicks you in the ass hole with their spare leg, then they're probably going to be seated on the floor. So it's time to start building height and then try to win a scramble That's from that position. That. Build height and heist thing. You build height and heist, my friend. Build height if they are sitting back and kicking you in the ass hole, unless you can switch legs. If you can switch legs, then great. But most of the time, you know, they kick one leg free, they pump, they like rip their leg out, then you've got nothing. So it's better to basically stand up with both legs or at least one leg and then you've got like a single leg takedown position from a leg lock entanglement which is what i should have done against william sick we live in line don't we we do oh, some people <laughs> <laughs> yeah were you going to do an instructional about this you said or it isn't yeah instructional. no it's, it's not an instructional yet i was just debating what the next idea would be but it's quite it needs to be broad enough and it needs to be deep enough that someone someone else can't just be like well i already knew all this right so yeah, it's, it's pretty hard to think of a whole new instructional. That's not just half guard, you know, yeah. Delahiva guard. It's got to be a new concept rather than just a guard that everyone's well familiar with. And you might offer some details, but essentially everything would be the same. That's fucking shit. No doubt. I have a question here. Thoughts on isometric strength training. That's also, so shave your head already. I don't know if get my guy. I did have a haircut. Shave it completely. Completely shave. Yeah. Look good with a shaved head, man. Maybe I'll go 0 0.5 next. Go skin. I used, to, I used to go 0 0.5. Yeah, but it's just too cold, skin my friend. Thing. It's too cold. Fair. It's just not nice at all. I have to wear a hat all the time. Right. Thoughts on isometric strength training. It is very good, particularly if you have a tendon injury. Shout out Jake Tura. He's done a lot of reading about this subject. Let's say if you've got tendon patella, patella tendonitis in the... Man, that guy outside's gone crazy. Patella tendonitis. He's getting some wicked brains. He's going crazy. He is getting it was, It's very worthwhile lost. doing some isometric holds as an example on a leg extension to get the knees warmed up. I've done that with a few of my online guys. So you jump on a leg extension, three sets of 30 seconds or so, or in a split squat position. Basically, the isometric stuff is good for tendon strength. Um, I don't do a whole lot of it with these fellas. We add in some isometric holds to exercises, like two second pauses, and we like the eccentric work, but I don't do a lot of isometric holding like balls and carries too often. We do a bit of carry work at the end, but it is it is fairly good stuff to do. Uh, it's not groundbreaking, but you're going to get very good benefits. If you do have a particular tendon injury, it, it does get, it, it is particularly useful. Even if you've got like some elbow injury, you could you know, press into something like a, an overcoming um, isometric hold where you're pushing into something, trying to overcome the force. Rehab. Good for Good. rehab. Fantastic for rehab, yeah. We did quite, yeah. Actually, rehab. we did quite a bit of that for you, didn't we? Yeah. Isometric split squat holds. Holding, yeah. Yeah, if you, in, if you do have an injury, they're, they're fantastic. Pails and rails. Yeah, they, they're, re, they're really good to, to, to add in to get your, a good base amount of strength back and then you can start working on the eccentric portion of the movements and then back into the concentric. We do hold a lot of the exercises, to be fair. So it's all, it's all the same, isn't it? Once you're holding, that's it, you're holding. Yeah, I think this fella's maybe talking about like an isometric ball hold or when they see people doing the isometric split squats with, with loaded weights, all that Something stuff. Something like an isometric ball hold. Yep. Like, correct me if I'm wrong, please do. But 
Can't you just practice that whilst you're doing jujitsu? Correct. Right. Say no more. Correct. Best way to maintain mount against cross hip post and how to create pressure from mount. Cross hip post. So what I would like to do there is get an underhook. Just let's say they have one cross hip post, but you underhook the other arm and walk it up. Don't continue walking it up and try and go elbow to elbow because you will probably get bridged off to the side. Oh, don't do that. Don't do that because you'll probably get bridged off to the side. Put the hand through with the arm weave. Oh, the meat hook. The meat hook, sorry, yeah. Meat hook grip. And because they're on their side, pushing with the cross hip post, they'll be popped through. But if they're flat, don't go meat hook. You see? Yeah. So if they're on the side, sometimes they'll try to go flat afterwards and it'll give you time to get under hook when they're flat and walk the thing up when they're flat. But if they're on their side, go for the meat hook. Fair play. So you just, you collect one arm and if they're still being pretty disciplined with that cross yeah. post, then you just keep trying to get the Which is hook. most people, I'd say. Most people up to a certain level will just keep the thing there whilst you walk their arm up and then you just get the easy meat hook and All right. take it the back. There you, you know, go. Take the crack. Take the crack. And take the crackhead. Good question. How to create pressure from mount. So I would say the pressure from mount is from consistently walking the arms up and Hips. balancing on the sprawl. I mean, balancing on the bridge and kipping. So just obviously don't lose position, but that's not necessarily tiring because they're just lying down. And then the rest of it is using your, you know, your grip on the floor and with your hands and feet to walk their arms up their body. And maybe they'll bridge and make you post and then they'll get their elbow back and you do it like four, five, six, seven, eight, whatever, 15 times until eventually they run out of energy on their arms and bridging. And then you just suffocate them or you know whatever you rate the the crossing the feet behind keeping the knees in nice and tight crossing the feet under the butt or near i think the butt. you have to change how you have your feet depending what uh, they're doing on the reaction yeah it's a reaction basis thing yeah not just i, I like to sometimes i'll sit up and push the grips across to get them to the floor if my partner's like for example if my partner's head is flat to the floor pushing backwards sometimes i'll just cross grip the hands and push them down if they're keeping more curled up then I might just like try and get an inside tie and then push their arm to the floor and then keep working till I get an underhook. Mm. Uh, you know, it just varies. If I've got no grips in and I'm already pretty low down, then maybe I'll cross my legs and bridge into them just just long enough to get my grips back and then work. You know, it depends. It's not it's not just yes or no, black there's, and white. There's not a one Up answer that's going to solve it all, is there? Upside down. Mate. When would you move over to eco approach? I might start with it. Okay. Start with it as a noob, get to a level where you understand all the positions and all the games that the eco approach offers and then try to learn new techniques, which are just little snippets of a move. Fair play. Right. Sorry. Felt like that was underwhelming, but here we are. Do, do you, you want to do the next one? You're welcome to. Would you get a sports psychologist if you don't compete at your fullest potential because of anxiety? Did you look into it? Uh, it's actually a pretty good question. Depends how much competition means to you. Yeah, Number it depends one. how... I feel like the more you think you are affected, probably the more you will be affected if you accept that. How I would say is you always have physical sim symptoms of nerves, but you don't need to allow those to reflect back into your idea of what your performance is going to be. Your physical symptoms are going to be there whether or not you win the match. Like, e.g., you know, knees weak, palms are heavy. Vomit. Spaghetti. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> spaghetti yeah. on the sweater. Yeah. Uh, but you could still go out there and perform really well. So yeah. you just have to Surprise yourself. try to... It's not like an easy or like complete on or off thing. I don't think anyone would have zero nerves, but the people who are probably best will be able to tone their nerves all the way down. So it's like they're very calm and confident despite the despite knowing that they could lose. The How match. did you feel going into the Mason Fowler match? Yeah, kind of like that. Just like, well, I had nothing to lose anyway. Yeah. I just didn't want to get my back broken. That was one thing. I was like, cause, you know, because he's, he's very strong. And if he gets to your back, I feel like he'll bridge and <laughs> on your lower back. Yeah, he loves that. Yeah. And he'll break your lower back. So didn't want that to happen. But I was, but I was like, obviously, I could just tap if that was going to be the case but yeah, get some yeah that's yeah. basically it i mean there's nothing nothing to fear but fear itself eh shout out the joker <laughs> love that fella yeah 
Shout out. Shout out. Is it the Joker? Whoever it is. The guy, the guy from Batman. You know the one. Yeah, fair play. So it's just like, I'm here now. I may as well just fucking compete my best. I don't have anything to lose. Let's go out. Do yeah. My best. And in terms of like, oh, but you know, I can't shake the feeling. Well, <laughs> you, you can do just it anyway. watch the feeling as a third person you know shout out meditation there you go shout, yeah just watch yourself Fuck being like yeah Fuck, you know look what's happening to me oh i've just i'm on my like eighth shit of the day or whatever whatever it may be <laughs> <laughs> you know i don't do that personally yeah. but i know some people that you're very, shit like rabbits when they're you're very thoughtful aren't you that is a as a meditation approach where you go okay i'm feeling this i can see i'm feeling this and that is fine and that is and that is that well go, it's kind of bad it? but obviously because it ruins Why? your motor you know <clears throat> your coordination is a bit ruined when you're like that but if you just accept that you're probably not the only one that is like this and as long as and it's not your fault either that you are feeling like that yeah wow this is a therapy session it's really? not your fault this is probably the first <laughs> deepest conversation <laughs> we've ever had on this stupid <laughs> fucking podcast <laughs> goodwill hunting it's not your fault it's, it's not your fault. fault. It's, it's not your fault. Check out Headspace uh, in all seriousness as well. That is a great meditation app. I've been doing that for years. It is great for self-reflection and exactly what Flano just said. Looking at the thought, being like, oh, I'm just thinking. That is yeah. okay. Yeah, but the the reaction to it is not your fault, essentially. So you it's just not your fault. deal with it. Deal with it. That's the headline. Fucking do it. Suffer in just silence. Put that in the timestamp. <laughs> Fucking deal with it, Suffer you loser. Suffer in silence. Yeah. Through that, unless Gordon you have Ryan. yeah, an injury. Okay, how can I better understand when to use my legs to off balance opponent in half guard, half butterfly guard? That's a tricky question in a way. When to off balance someone with my legs? Other than just saying all the time, I think what he's saying is when should I specifically use a butterfly sweep to take them over? Ah, oh, we worked on some of that. Yeah, but he's talking about half butterfly. So honestly, you don't really have butterfly sweeps like that from half up you need an element of sitting up even if you start on your back let's say you get like an overhook a wrist grip and you want to butterfly sweep someone you could just go with your knee and kick them over the top but chances are if you're both flat you're not going to have the power to just kick someone over the top with a knee to chest and, and kick you've got to sit up into them make them drive back into you and then you do a knee to chest and kick Kazu so shout, sorry. shout out Kazushi, Kazushi. yeah fucking Kazushi. Kazushi, yeah you meet Sasha. them with, you know, and that's why I say you're building height because if you're just flat and they're on top of you sprawling down, you'll be able to load their weight onto you, maybe, but not really. And you'll be able to kick them over, maybe, but not really. Rather than if you push in a bit, they'll push in extra. Now, as you go flat, you can, you know, send them with enough, you know, some of their own weight as well. There's some fucking sick videos of Gordon Ryan training. Uh, he had training with this wrestler and he must have done this sweep. He's like getting taken down. As he's getting taken down, he's got like he's got like an overhook, and he just brings that foot in. Boom! Just fucking sends him flying. There's like two or three times. The the wrestler fella, he f just fucks him up the whole round. I can't remember which training video it was, but he does a great sweep. He's got overhook. As he's getting taken down, he brings that hook in straight. A over Yoko, there. it's like a reverse butterfly sweep. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, reverse butterfly sweep. Yeah. Nice. And he also does one to. David Azari, what's his name? David yeah. um Asari. Yeah, the Davis. Athlete. Davis Asari. All oh, the proteins repeating on me. Yep. All right, well there we go. Yeah. Evening 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 supplement stack suggestions. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> magnesium. A stack of supplements. Magnesium. That's it. Maybe zinc and magnesium. That's it. There will be some non-responders from magnesium or over-responders and it may do the opposite effect and actually hype you up. If you're one of those individuals, then stop taking it. How about not taking a literal stack of pills before bed? That's a great idea. Call me crazy, but there's nothing more disgusting than having more than one pill at a time. No. Magnesium glycerate, glycerate, the one that begins with G. No. Glycinate. Glycerate. Can't remember. Magnesium G. That's the one I use. Helps me sleep well. Glucophate. No. Glucophase. Forget it, mate. Syph syphilis. Syphilis. Magnesium Wee. syphilis. We did very well there. Shut up. Thoughts on Zercher squats? They're a great squat alternative. The reason why they're great is they keep you in an upright position. If you do back squats, they can be quite compressive on the spine, but because the weight is loaded in front and the crease of the elbows, it's going to have less axle loading and compression on the back. Uh, due to the nature of where it's placed, so it can keep you in a more upright position. 
Does it have a magical effect and translation to the sport of jiu-jitsu? No, it absolutely does not, but it allows you to get into a deep squat position because you're more upright. I don't like them, they're tiring. Yeah. You got a tense, like, I almost felt like, can I swear? It's shit. We've been swearing, yeah. Yeah, or I almost felt like shitting myself when I used to do Zercher squats. Like, you're holding it tight, you do a brace. When you get to that bottom mid-range, yeah, because of how you're holding it and you're hunched, it is very much like... Realistically, I think the Zercher position should be like, pump, like pa palms, sorry, thumbs facing out. So you've got like a nice, like, sort of like getting a bit of lats engaged there. Yeah. Rather than just like holding it tight to you. You can hold it in tight, but I prefer that position. Um, I like a butterfly grip. Yeah, you like that. That was. Oh, it can, you can do either or. I, how do you feel during the doing, doing front squats? Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, with the strap, fine. Without the strap, my my wrists hurt. Yeah, we would just use the straps. Yeah, yeah, you could do front squats too. Yeah, like the front squats. Front front loaded variations are really good for majority of people. I rate them. If you're going to do front squats and you're not very comfortable with them, just use straps. Get a strap, put it up, and you're good to go. I think generally I like things that are easy to back out of if I fuck it up and I feel like a front squat is slightly that, easier that's the perfect one to do yeah, yeah. you just place it on the floor just same like for the zercher you just go oh I don't have that and put it down yeah but the back squat you gotta do a little hop out of the way yeah and you can really fuck you yourself really really someone could get really hurt <laughs> okay let's <laughs> wow is that the time no it's not the time nah it's not the time actually I get stuck and pass from headquarters what's your main go to move slash guard buy my instructional brat but, which one uh, which one uh, uh, true yeah uh, leg locks the UK variant uh, but yeah, I would like to go to waiter guard from there, or I'll try to go to single leg X, like, like is, tipping them off to the side. Della Riva. Is waiter yeah. guard the one how you go, you go behind, you grab your own shin? What guard's that? Yeah, yeah, that's what that's part of it. You grab your own shin, and then you underhook their other leg, and then you can go to X guard, and then man there pretty easily. Those man there. Wow, wow. That's, oh, that's man, so you can go straight to X guard. It's literally wow. such a good guard. Wow. Yeah, but really, headquarters, you... you, you it's not great, right? It's not like, it's, it's kind of like you, you, you have been collapsed from there. I mean, it's not bad in a way because it's just, you know, you have grips on their leg at least so you can start, to, it's a guard, it's better than no guard. But, and it's like, it can be easy to get access to the legs from there. However, it can also be easy for them to get a body lock from that position because one of your legs is already pinned to the floor and your other knee is just pointing at their chest. And if they can misdirect, you know, they can tie your hip flexors out, they can get, they can get chest to chest. They can start to underhook you. They can float past. There's a lot of options as the top fella. Shout so, out float pass. Yeah, shout out float passing. Love floaters. <laughs> right. <laughs> Upcoming WNO card predictions slash breakdowns uh, and thoughts. Shout, yeah. shout out Young Wesley. Young in Wesley his, from Mocking. In his um, press conference. I was actually quite impressed with that. Young Wesley's uh, Owen Jones. He looked damn good in that press conference. Good that was mockery. Very funny. Good entertainment value. Well done, young Wesley. Mm. I think he'll win. Yeah. Um, I don't see why not. He's a, he's as good as any human. Yep. We're all equal in the eyes of God, but obviously Owen is more equal in this match, which is going to help him. Fair play. Yeah. What about Giancarlo Barbosa? I'll give it to Giancarlo. You know what? I gave it to Giancarlo via leg lock. Okay. I think he's going to leg lock him. Okay. Yeah. Well, everyone's entitled to their opinion, mate. So they can quit the chewed. Shout out the Tudors. But what? Yeah. Shout out Tudors. What about Diego Pato? That's a good match. Oh, he's fighting... Uh, Some other fella. Who is he fighting? Rice or something like that. Rao? Rice, Diogo Heiss. Yeah. Is it that? Something. Whatever. He's got a match. I'll, yeah, I'll look he, forward to any of his matches. He's got a great match. The dude's a stud. He's literally like really good at, who, at this sport. Who else is fighting? There's uh, no good match. Honestly, like I shouldn't have even read that question out because the only match that I'm God. fully aware of is... Gordon Ryan. <laughs> it's Gordon Ryan. It's Gordon Ryan. It's competing. Oh, <laughs> young Owen Jones is coming, you know, he has self-belief, which <laughs> will take you a long way. And... I don't think he's super religious either. So it's just, it's just pure self-belief pure without, self -belief. without like, you know, God could swing it either way. It's like, yep. no, I'm probably going to win this every single time, yep. which I'm sure is like one of the most helpful traits you could have. Very. And, you know, he's got a very like weird 
Ah, no, nah, I wouldn't beat him up. Actually, I'll beat him up. Yeah, he's got a very weird game in that he goes through reverse close guard a lot. And it's like, if you don't tra train specifically for it, it could be tough to deal with, that sort of thing. Baited, but, bro. Uh, you beat me up, bro. Yo, nah, bro. but he already did that in his last match. And uh, I'm sure that Meji, uh, having trained with the likes of Abe and that in uh, Danaher's have has also encountered the reverse close guard. And I feel like Owen should probably have a backup plan to the reverse close guard because, yeah, it might be difficult. Shout out the A block. He loved Abe. that. He it's, it's Abe. It's off, after a Japanese guy, <laughs> Abe. <laughs> you know the judo guy? Abe. Abe, yeah. Satoshi. Type it in. Abe. Uh, wow. He's not that good. <clears throat> How to get... Are we got next question or are we typing in Abe? Yo, next Jamie. question. Uh, Jamie, pull that up for me. How to get back into training after being really sick? More weights in jiu-jitsu, feeling like a bum. I feel like I need to do a post about this. Been posting a lot recently. I'm going to keep posting After a lot. being sick. Yeah. This happened to me. I did a session yesterday. That was my first session back. And I took it really fucking lightly. We're talking about weights here. Oh. Weights, 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 weights. I didn't go to jiu-jitsu. I've yet to go back to jiu-jitsu tomorrow. The first weight session you do... Just tr treat yourself like you're an absolute noob. Lift everything probably 30 to 40% lighter. Do one to one to three sets. Make it feel pretty good, like your, bright, like your heart rate's going up and you're increasing your core temperature. And then be like, ah, I'm kind of sick of this, and then leave. And then you just leave your ego at the door and then go in the next day and you can do a slightly harder session and then leave it a couple of days. Then you go and do a slightly harder session than that, than that one and then you, you'll be back, you'll be fine. Is that whilst you're ill? Whilst you're recovering. So let's say my recommendation would, would be to feel at least 75 to 85% better to do your first weight session. I think if you're under, like even under 80% feeling better, you're probably just going to get sick again. I think if you push it too hard. I've started taking zinc and magnesium and it's, and it's ducked me many illnesses recently. Yeah, it's zinc. At night, I feel it come in. I'm like... Zinc magnesium. Ooh, zinc magnesium in 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 and i get vitamin d every day in 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 and i you know just think about being healthy a lot yeah eight hours sleep too i that, can't stress that, that enough have. i really can't you could i, I do stress it's probably <laughs> probably the most it's thing probably I stress. enough i think <laughs> saying it once is almost enough per person mate you're getting a lot of questions about your hair <clears throat> uh read them out how's Let's on, have them. how's it how Owen grow hair? Uh, I just, <laughs> when I get to the barbers, I just tell them like, leave a patch here and in the front sort of bit as well. And they ask if I want them to do the sides and I just go, no, no, leave the sides. Shout out Dr. Film. You show the photo, <laughs> Dr. Film, mate. Can I look like this? <laughs> <laughs> I just want the long back and sides with nothing on top. If that's yeah. all right. Long back and sides. Is stretching. It's, good, it's a good trip. Long back and sides. Is stretching every day necessary? No, it's not. No, Listen man. to our previous podcast, or maybe the one before. We talk about stretching. Uh, I used to love it. I don't do it anymore. I just squat three times a week, and I do Cossack squats three times a week, and I feel that really sorts my hips out. I mean, stretching... Yeah, in some ways, though. Not every day, though. But I feel like good hamstring mobility is necessary. For sure. But, like, do you need to stretch a lot to get really flex? Like, yeah, okay. If you want to get really, really, really flexible, like doing the splits and be able to, like, you know, like bend forward really far, for sure, stretching will help you do that. But you also want to be strong in those ranges. Yeah, like, with strength in the range. Yeah, yeah. with strength <laughs> in the range. So, like, okay. Okay, yeah. Having so. a good RDL. Or DS. I think, like... To improve your hamstring flexibility, improve your ability to hinge. So yeah. like, can you get into like the midfoot? Can you create length in the glutes so you can actually access some range in the hamstrings? And then like, what does your actual RDL technique look like? I've seen a lot of bad RDLs. Make sure you can do Romanian deadlifts properly and you can really try and force the range. So you wanna also have a strong core and lower back. And that's going to help you gain more hamstring flexibility. What Jeff, if you did a little every day, though? Just a little bit. For like sure. 10, yeah. 15 seconds. And so, one day, you'd, one day you're just great. Yeah. You'd just be strong and flexible. Yeah. So you could do some dynamic stretches. You could get, you could stand up and like 
dynamically with the knees as straight as possible, reaching down towards your knees and then go down to a squat position. You could play around with some Jefferson curls as well. Not super heavy, but how I would use a Jefferson <laughs> curl is like slowly getting a light-ish weight and segmenting, going seg like segment through the spine to try and get as low as possible. So you're getting good spine flexibility and then you eventually get to the bottom, pause for five seconds and then come back up with a very light weight, probably like eight to 12 kgs. I wouldn't do that every day, two or three times a week. 50 reps. Yep. You could stretch after jit session, but don't stretch too hard. Basically, don't stretch too hard. Oh, I had a question, an inbox question. All right. Here we go. It was a long one. I might have to paraphrase. Go for it, Chief. If we have RDLR it. on the right leg, Jason Rouse says to keep a good connection between the knee and elbow on the right side so they can't get the underhook and start to pass. As soon as I told my training partner to look for the underhook on that side, I'm finding it nearly impossible to keep that connection and manage to invert underneath. Do I just need to keep fighting for elbow inside knee or do I need more off balancing or should I just go to something else once they're set on trying to underhook? Shout out Amsterdam seminar in June. Uh, it's actually Leuven and it's in June. And apparently I've been pronouncing it very well, Leuven. There you go. Get to his Leuven seminar. But before then... Oh, yeah. But yeah, before then, yeah. Uh, quick answer, right? I, I don't believe that you've got the right and left right on this, but I'll answer both. Let's say you have RDLR on this side. Idiot. You know, they shouldn't be able to get an underhook at all on this side because you're holding that leg. So it's probably going to be the other side that he's talking about. And in that case, yeah, get more off balancing. Try to get their hands to the floor. When you spin through the legs, right, you want to basically... Make their legs light. Make them, yeah, like get underneath them so you can tip them forward onto their hands or just they can like load weight back into you and you can spin through. But basically try to get their hands to the floor and then use that to pull yourself through the gap. If they're always looking for that underhook, generally they'll like turn and give to face it and give you the other leg. So I might, you know, if you struggle to get between the legs, then you underhook the other leg and go to a modified X guard. Maybe we did a post on that, like, I can't remember if we did, grabbing the sole of the foot, tipping them forward, going to an underhook on the other leg, and then modified X guard. I think we did a post on that. Yeah, I believe we did. Adjust the tip. Should we do another one? No, we've done it. We've done it. It's okay. up there. It'd be worth finding it then, <clears throat> linking it to that video. How are RDLR you to ten modified minutes? X you got five guard. Minutes? Five minutes. All right, cool. Cool, all right, don't, I mean, it's not personal, it's just I, I have stuff after, all right? Can you get Jack? Can you get a Jack looking for Zeke and in a calorie maintenance? Yeah, of course you can. Lift weights, being in calorie maintenance. That's it. Eight hours sleep. Eight hours sleep. All right. Good to know though. Yeah, can't say it enough. Eight hours sleep every single night without oh, fail. Pop my rib during training. What training can I do to speed up the process? Unfortunately, nothing, mate. You you can't really do anything for your ribs. Um, you can uh, do cars with a medicine ball oh sure there you go you can do rotation exercises you can do like like uh what's it called nlp stretching <laughs> is that it nlp np neuro linguistic programming NPF, stretching. Yeah. the the other one uh FMS. pnf stretching pnf stretching you can do cars with a medicine ball you can do You've done this, so you know. I've done this, yeah, I've done this. Tell us through, walk us through. Yeah, so you, you get the medicine ball, you do a controlled articulate ro rotation. I may as well just Google that, mate, because, uh, you know, just in case you're not watching it on YouTube, there's no point, and I'm not going to demo it. And then you can do side crunches, you know, like this sort of thing, yeah. and you can do twists, like this sort of thing. And then you can do ab work. I'm trying to think in the early stages... I think you just want to you want to try and restore as much range as possible. Get the serratus anterior working. Yeah. Get the uh, breathing as well. Very key that you do breathing. Full reps of diaphragmatic breathing, where you're pushing from the side of your ribs out, so you feel like your whole ribs are expanding. Not necessarily just a belly thing where you just go forward and backwards with your belly, but a whole, you know, in and out like a bottle. Check out a fella called Angus Bradley. He did a, I think it's his core rotation. Uh, program and he goes over a lot of breathing stuff in that or you can pro I'll, sign up with me I'll program it for you <laughs> <laughs> uh, Angus Bradley's yeah, I think it's like yeah, tw 20 yeah, bucks yeah. cheap program and he'll teach you how to do the breathing exercises that could be useful for you check Fantastic. out check that out Angus Bradley Price yeah <laughs> okay man 
you love to steal off other people, don't you? Love copying That's just, people. You just copy people. That's all you do. You just go on Instagram, you make fake accounts, and you copy people, and you then you then upload it as if it's your own. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like we, we had some of that beef recently. I yeah. actually do something similar, to be fair, with my stuff. Like yeah. I will see a move, copy or it. I'll like I'll fucking copy your. Frog. I'll just so happen to perchance upon it, and then I'll think of it earlier, and I'll copy the same scenario, You're and sh- then. I'll teach it or I'll even upload it. You're to a YouTube. charlatan, mate. You're a charlatan. You know what? Be your own man. Be your own man, mate. I'd rather be someone else's man. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> you you seem lost in your career. That sounds pretty sus the way I said it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'd be someone. I could be your man. <laughs> uh, well, anyway. Just, yes, anyway, stop copying me. <clears throat> That's basically It's just it. better to stop be original, copy, right? And then we can, we can all Fuck. get like... Everyone just has their original thoughts. Did you invent the light bulb? No. So don't use a light bulb. It seems pretty simple to me, right? Did you sew the clothes that you're wearing? No. So don't wear those clothes. You know? No, fair play. Yeah, fair play. You want to hit the last question? Go for it, Chief. All right. I'll get one from YouTube. YouTube. Uh, Hold on one sec. Uh, There's one about your armpit hair. Uh, (laughs) There's one about Dav. Dav, yeah. What's the saying about Dav? There's one about. It just says, "Let's go, Dav." <laughs> that guy is so funny. <laughs> Shut up, Alex. Let's go, Dav. He's, let's, let's go, Dav. Let's go, champ. Let's go, Dav. Oh, I love that guy. He bought. He beat Paulie and Lima in a competition recently. Fair play to him. Wow. Yep. Right. There's none that I really want to answer from here. Shout, out, Dav. Let's fucking let's go, Dav. That's what we'll say. That's uh, it, mate. Eating eating to high calorie foods. Autistic. It's got to be one that makes Dyslexia. sense, though. Easing to high calorie foods to bulk. Cashew nuts are sick, but seed oils are not good. I mean, shut up, mate. Like, basically, find out what some calorie dense foods are. And you need to remember if you're bulking, you only need to be 500 calories above your maintenance calories, which really isn't that much. So you could get to the end of the day and be like, hang on, I'm at calorie maintenance. I could have a piece of four chocolate mousses two chocolate mousses <laughs> two two Ooh, and i would actually destroy those so easily easily that's There's a salted caramel one in mns and it's fantastic <laughs> honestly it's fucking really good two chocolate mousses 250 cows each a pop ice cream but this fella seems like he doesn't want to go down the processed food or junk food route so here you go mate you can go okay I'm you can eat natural natural that grow in the natural wild natural like products vegetables Brett you wouldn't do that because it's just gonna it's, it's gonna be a lot eat of calories eat a thousand lettuce yeah eat please. five broccoli stalks um, eat, get a piece of toast butter peanut butter jam what kind of toast sourdough toast or whole grain toast would you put any powder on top of the blueberries cacao powder <laughs> okay <laughs> Cacao Sounds powder. delicious. Would you put any butter on the bread or just have the bread as is? I would put olive oil on the bread. Just olive oil. Yeah. Vinegar. Burger patties. High quality olive oil. One big rock of salt rather high than quality. grinding the salt up so it's healthier. Shout out James Cooper. The we, whole love <laughs> we love James Cooper. Shout The whole Shout. grain of the salt. <laughs> in a, in a beauti- All in a wrap. In a beautifully uh, cast iron pan. In a beautifully cast iron <laughs> pan. Okay. Love that from the call center. I just like to get lots of salt and I'll just wrap the bread around the salt <laughs> and then I'll put the olive oil on the side in a cup and you can just have like the bread <laughs> and then have a bit of olive oil. And obviously salt as you, yeah. Yeah. And obviously the salt will kind of permeate through the bread and obviously onto your teeth as you grind away. Where are the calories in that? The with bread. It's a big, <laughs> it's a big rock of salt, mate. Mate. And the salt is calories too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Basically, anyway. mate, eat 500 calories above your surplus. You don't have to eat cashew nuts, mate. Uh, it's so dry. Look into some other kind of processed foods, maybe, because it's going to be easier to get your calorie density up. It's not going to kill you, mate. You'll be, you'll be okay if you're burning it off. But the whole point is you're not going to be burning it off because you want to be in the calorie surplus. What is a nice surplus. way of eating nuts? There's just not Just eat porridge. It, yeah, it, well, here you go. You get what oats when you have some have some oats with some honey in it. Basically, you want to put sweet yeah, things in there. But make make Anchor. food more palatable. If you're struggling to eat, if you're if you're trying to bulk and you're struggling to eat the amount of food you need to be eating, make your food more palatable. Sugar, some Boom. some some like Boom. some sweet chili sauce, some ketchup, or some honey. Use condiments. That's what they're made for. 
right? Play it safe. Flavoring. Use condiments. Condiments. Let's Guys, go. Let's go. Let's wrap it up. Fuck off. So good to see you again. God, yeah. 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 Guys. This is our 140th podcast, guys. Remember, Thank guys, you. like, subscribe, YouTube, Spotify. Go do that now. Now, you, Owen's got three instructionals. You can buy. Have they, They've been purchasing them. You've had a good you, month. I had my best sales day ever this month. So, guys, I've got to love you and leave you, but I'm going to the Bahamas. Great, guys. That's it. That's, that's the last podcast we'll ever do. There you go. Don't say that. We, we should say that over and over again, actually. Yeah, guys. Next one is me. the last one ever. <laughs> send money. You're moving to the Bahamas. Send money. Send money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Send yeah. Money, send I'm going to buy a Monclizzi. Guys, check out my strength program. I'm actually changing up the way I do strength programs this week. I'm going to have a live program that I'm going to be running constantly. I'm moving away from the subscription. You've got to go. I'll, t- I'll tell you next podcast. I'll I'm do. interested to hear this. Is oh, okay. this what we're doing with the fitter? With the fitter. Yeah. Yeah, with the fitter app. Yeah. Am so basi- basically what I'm going to be doing is I have a monthly subscription model, which I run, but the problem is you start that from square one. So it's quite hard for me to update as I've been gaining knowledge and I've been making the programs better. I have to keep going back, which, which messes up an entire block of programming. So I'm going to run a monthly subscription where it's going to be live. I'm going to be changing the program every four weeks. Uh, to what I think is going to be the best program for people to do. And you can just join that, a monthly subscription. I think I'm going to price it about £29 a month. Very affordable. It's going to be like a quid, a pound, under a pound a day. Get on up. The link will be in the bio. If you want to get strong, which you do, get on You up. want a respectable body and you want to shake everyone's hand in the room? Yes. Goodbye. Yes.